This is the new speed editor from Blackmagic Design. It's a small, lightweight keyboard designed to be used for editing inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. It has control over several actions inside of Resolve and allows you to perform functions for much faster editing compared to a normal keyboard and mouse. With quick actions for commands like trim in and out, transition, title, ripple edit and more, it has everything you need to speed up your editing. Also, they say, I've been using the speed editor inside of Resolve to really give it a go over the past week or so and to give you guys my honest opinion about it. As someone who's never really used a device like this, I really want to see if this could speed up my editing. And along with that, comparative products in a very similar category and price range that have been used for editing like the Agoda Stream Deck and the Loop Deck Live. And I should also mention and clarify that Blackmagic Design did send me this unit to review for this video. However, they are not paying me to make this video. So this is a completely open, honest, unobjectively, unopinionated review of what I think of the Speed Editor. Well, that's it and done. Let's dive in and talk about my initial impressions of the Speed Editor. The Speed Editor is available from Blackmagic and its retailers for £235 and $295. US And one awesome thing about this device, for a short time, you can actually buy a copy of Resolve and get one of these for free. The only company I've seen so far actually promoting this on their website is Adorama, so I've left a link to that product page down in the description below, so you guys wanna check that out. I've also left any more information that I've been given from Blackmagic on this offer and this deal, also in the description, if you guys wanna check it out. And honestly, when I first took this out of the box, I was really surprised by the size of it. Now, Scott, if you put in a, that's what she said, quote, right there and then, I swear, it would be very appropriately put. Good for you. I'm proud of you. I genuinely thought it would be a lot smaller than this. I thought it would be something more akin to the Stream Deck or the Loop Deck Live. But I'm very happy with the size of this keyboard. It feels very well built. It's got a really good enclosure. The buttons and the dial feels really, really smooth and really, really responsive. And they make a very satisfying sound. See what I mean? Overall, I'm really happy with the initial impressions and the overall feel of the device, but let's see how that compares to when actually plugging it in and using the device itself. The device can be connected in one of two ways. You can connect it via Bluetooth or via USB-C with the included USB-C to USB-C cable. I do find it kind of frustrating that they included a USB-C to USB-C cable. While I know many editors don't actually have a port for this on their PC or their device, it feels very much of an oversight by Blackmagic to include some kind of adapter or an additional cable because for the amount you're paying for it, I feel like it should come with the variety of cables that you might need to use it on any device. But I digress, you can use it via Bluetooth as I mentioned before and there's a nice handy battery indicator on the device to tell you how much juice is left in there before it starts dying. I have no official word from Blackmagic how long this battery lasts for, however they did tell me they are doing extensive testing and apparently right now it runs for quite a long time. So you should have no problem using the device via Bluetooth if you don't have a USB-C port on your PC. But once you plug it in or you connect it via your PC, you are ready to go because it turns on when you launch DaVinci Resolve 17. There is no on or off button on this device. You start at Resolve and it, uh, it kicks in. It's ready to go. It's also worth noting that this will only work with DaVinci Resolve 17. So if you're using earlier versions like Resolve 16, this device will not work with that version of Resolve. And the main place you're gonna be using this device is on the cut page for speedy editing and the controls on the device echo that a lot. It has different controls for repeated editing tasks that you do on the timeline like trim in and out, titles, transitions, and even support for multi-cam editing. And one cool little feature that I really, really like about this device is the quick close-up button. Pressing that button while over the top of a shot in the timeline actually drops in a close-up version of that shot into the timeline. You can then tweak that by double pressing the same button again to get additional functions to tweak the shot you just inserted. I will say plugging this in for the first time as someone who's never used a device like this it felt very intuitive and very easy to understand. And while it might take a bit of time to navigate the buttons and figure out where things are just like a normal keyboard I think I could actually get used to this pretty easily. But did it speed up my editing? Yes, kind of. Let me explain. I'm usually used to these kinds of devices coming into play at the later end stages 
of the editing process when you've done all that initial rough cutting and you're ready to move on to the next steps the speed editor kind of comes in around the beginning part of the editing process and that makes sense it's a speed editor it's designed to be getting those rough cuts done as quickly as possible and it does that very very well I felt like I had a lot of control over my timeline and my project and I wasn't trying to figure out the device and what it did for a long period of time I didn't have to check manuals or go on the website to read it was really really easy to pick up and understand the ease of the device sets it apart from the rest and while for a first timer this may look really really daunting it was actually really enjoyable to use and i don't think it would necessarily move me away from a keyboard and mouse setup however if i was given this for editing and i was in like a first assistant editor job or i was doing this as a first time gig i wouldn't be opposed to using this so great job black magic but should you get one if you use Resolve day in and day out, would this actually make sense for you or would something else fit the bill a lot better? This is something that I was actually genuinely curious about because I've actually used similar products in the past for editing tasks. I wanted to see how it compared to something like an editing keyboard for that kind of stuff. And while I think the Speed Editor is a very specific product and it meets a very professional market, I don't think it's gonna be the thing everyone gravitates to, even those who do edit in Resolve. For one, it's only really compatible for editing in Resolve 17, and it's only really useful on the cut page. So if you wanted a device for editing and you didn't use Resolve, what options are there out there? And could those options be similar and offer the same kind of things that the Speed Editor does? So with that question in the air, I thought it'd be a good idea for me to pick up a few extra products that I thought would be good substitutes for the Speed Editor to use in other applications. And while these devices don't fall directly under the same category as the Speed Editor, they aren't exactly editing keyboards, they do offer very similar functionality for the kinds of things the Speed Editor does. And I'm not gonna be going into software versions of these products I'm not going to be talking about touch portal or the stream deck app you can get on your phone those things are separate in my eyes they are not dedicated hardware for these kinds of things nor are they physical products you can use them on anything so I'm not going to include those in this video but bear in mind those are also options you can also consider but I also want to check out products that are similar in price range to the speed editor so I looked at the stream deck and the Loop Deck Live. But let's start off with the Loop Deck Live, which retails for £229 or $269. Much like the Agela Stream Deck, the Loop Deck Live offers a customizable LCD button pad as well as physical buttons and dials that are customizable. It also has USB-C integration and actually comes with a USB-C to USB-A type cable. Pretty nice considering that the Speed Editor doesn't actually include one of those cables. It's a really well-built device and I feel like it's got a really nice solid design. However, one thing I didn't like was the stand. It clips on in a really awkward way and I felt I was fumbling a lot of the time to actually get it to work and click onto the device. But aside from that, I actually think it's a very well-made product. However, that is pretty much where the good things end with the Loop Deck Live, unfortunately. You see, I hooked up the Loop Deck Live to my Mac and I downloaded their software, which they recommend doing with the user manuals and on their website. And much like the Stream Deck, if you never use it, this software controls the device itself and allows you to customize it and add your own functionality. Now, I am aware that this device is pretty much catered to live streamers, hence the name Loop Deck Live. However, it is advertised on their website that you can use this for editing as well in fact they actually have another product on their website which is built for editing it has editing controls on the actual device so i feel like it's no hard jump to assume that this was the intention of this device but just for a more catered live audience and they advertise on their website how both of these products work with create applications like final cut pro premiere pro and other creative programs however when i downloaded the software and tried to use the device Nothing worked. There were errors on the device that said I had missing licenses for things that I thought came installed with the device. And I spent a good hour or two trying to figure out what the hell could be wrong, trying to figure out if I had to download additional custom profiles, keyboard shortcut presets, or something of that nature, until I discovered that you actually have to have an account to license the device so you could use the other creative workspaces on the Loop Deck Live. And it was probably my own negligence and ignorance. However, I didn't see anywhere on the website except for the download page at the very bottom 
that you are going to be missing when you download the software to actually make an account. There was nothing on the quick start guide. Nowhere else on the website did it say you need to make an account. It was very just hard to miss. Hard to miss? No, hard to see. It was very easy to miss. It was very hard to see. That's what I meant to say. And I really feel this is an easy solution to fix. Just move that piece of text to the top of the website or include some kind of splash screen on the software when you download it to encourage people to make an account. Lock them out of the software and say, oi, to use this, you need an account. I think it would be much easier and save a lot of headaches if people knew to do that before they did anything else. So, loop deck guys, just a bit of word of warning, just kind of a you know piece of friendly advice. Maybe consider doing that for the benefit of me and everyone else that's using your products. But the uh, question you're all wanting to know the answer to was, did it speed up my editing? No, it didn't. In fact, after going through the entire process of installing the software, making an account and downloading the correct profiles, I couldn't actually use this for editing because the button still didn't work inside of the software. It didn't matter what keyboard shortcuts I was using, how I was pressing it, what a workspace I was in, it just didn't respond to anything I pressed on the device. And when it did work, it did the completely wrong thing. Half the time the pages wouldn't load or would be using the Mac OS defaults and it just wouldn't work in Final Cut Pro and it was just a... Just a mess. Don't get me wrong. This is not me bashing on the device at all. It's just Right now. I don't think the software is at a point where I can properly recommend it even for live streaming I think it has a lot of potential, but right now There's some serious fixes that need to be done moving on though I want to take a look at the stream deck and as a bit of disclaimer I don't actually have a stream deck XL which is a similar price to the speed editor and to the loop deck live just so you know I have the normal sized version of the product. However, it's also good to know that there are different versions of the product if you don't have the budget for a larger end device. Functionality is exactly the same across the board with all of these devices from the mini to the normal size stream deck and the XL, just the different size and buttons is the only difference. But aside from that, I think we all know what the Stream Deck is and how it works. It's a device typically built for streamers with programmable and customizable LCD keys to take your streams to the next level. It can also be used for editing and use in other creative applications as is advertised by Elgato themselves. You can even have different profiles, one for streaming, one for video editing, one for photo editing, one for graphic design, and so on. It's a very flexible, versatile product that I have used for a long time and I use every single time on my live stream. It's essentially a large macro and function pad that you can use to assign multiple different actions to as well as bulk processes through the Stream Deck's multi-action events. And I wanted to see how this device worked inside of my workflow for repeated tasks when I'm editing. And honestly, I use it a decent bit, actually more than I thought I would. It allowed me to extend the keyboard shortcuts that I use on my keyboard that I want to use, but don't have the space or the kind of workflow in place to use them frequently. And I have to say, after using this for a little bit on my Mac, I think I might actually go and get the 32 key version for editing. And as I said earlier, I can literally go from one application to the other and the profiles will switch depending on the application that I'm using. I can go from video editing to animating and the Stream Deck will know that based on the program that I'm using at the time. And while it may not be the same thing as the speed editor and not have the same kind of functionality for those initial edits, it really did speed up my editing and included more tasks that I wanted to include in my normal editing routine but I just didn't find time to. The Stream Deck really gave me the extra functionality to really master my workflow. And it was very similar to having like the touch bar you see on the MacBook Pros, but having one of those for my iMac and it just expanded things for me exponentially. So what are my final thoughts on these devices and where do they sit if you are looking to use them for editing? First of all, I should mention though, if you are an editor, these devices won't make you a better editor. Sure, they may make you a little bit quicker, but learning the craft and learning how the actual process works will get you far further than just relying on any one of these tools. Focus on telling stories and making the editing as best as it can be and focusing on the craft, then bring these in and then see how far your technique as an editor can develop. But if you are invested in the Resolve ecosystem, I would highly recommend checking out the Speed Editor. If you're looking to actually get the paid version of Resolve, just to remind you, you can still get that device for free when you buy a version of DaVinci Resolve. Reminder, 
the link for that product page is down below go check it out if it's something you're investing yourself into it's it's a no-brainer really go get that get this device for free and uh, really utilize it in your workflow however for me i found it was only really useful in resolve in the early stages of the editing process after that the device isn't really that much use after the cut page when you're onto the main editing portion you then have to go back to a keyboard and mouse whereas other devices may not be precise in their editing technique and the things they are doing with that initial rough cut you might have more granular control and overall longevity when using a different device for editing. I can create macros on the Stream Deck to combine several different functions to be able to speed up multiple tasks and repetitive tasks that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I can't really do that on the speed editor. So it really comes down to where you see this fitting into your workflow and where you'll see the most gain from it. And in terms of whether if you're looking to pick up the Stream Deck or the Loop Deck Live, go for the stream deck <laughs> i cannot with a straight face recommend the loop deck live to anyone the software feels like it was rushed like it wasn't really thought out like somebody crowned it together in a day it feels like some of the features weren't thought out completely so if you are thinking about picking up a device like this for editing or streaming or even graphic design in general i recommend any of the stream decks in the agata lineup also once again i didn't go into the actual software versions of these apps like touch portal or indeed the stream deck app you can get on your phone i didn't want to go into the software version because i felt like it wasn't a fair comparison to a physical device like the speed editor and i want to compare it fairly to other devices in a similar bracket well there you go that is a review of the speed editor from blackmagic overall very happy i think this is a fantastic device and i think blackmagic have done very very well with making something that is intuitive really easy to understand feels great and uh yeah, I think it's pretty awesome. Also, if you guys have any other questions about this device or indeed editing and working with it in general, then feel free to jump into my Twitch streams. Uh, link for that is down below. Or feel free to jump into the Discord and talk to other like-minded editors, graphic designers, streamers, and so on. Link for that is also down in the description below. And once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, take care.